Hi guys, welcome to the channel. I've been really excited about building this kit that I've got for you today. This is Mini Art's brand new Australian M3 Lee with full interior. Looking at the side of the box, we've got four colour schemes. I haven't decided which one I'm going for yet. And then looking inside the box, there are a good number of sprues. Big hunk of plastic here. Perhaps not as many as you would expect for a full interior kit, but still it should keep me busy for a while. And then we've got Mini Art's nice little glossy manual. The instructions are a nice straightforward affair. They look really easy to follow, really clear. And one of the largest parts of this kit will actually be the tracks, they're individual links and there are six sprues like this which make the bottom of the each track link and then there are six which make the top and then there's a huge set of sprues which make the individual um, horns, the guide horns for each piece. So there's a lot of pieces there. So moving on to the build, the construction starts with the transmission cover. And one thing you'll notice a lot in this kit is there are lots of very, very tiny parts, very thin parts, which are attached with quite large uh, sprue gates. And it can be quite easy to actually damage the parts as you try to remove them. So the floor of the kit is made from several parts which are linked together, there's no bathtub style hole. But actually this turns out to work really well. This big joint that you see here will get covered up by the floor and various other pieces of the interior. So it's actually not visible at all, so there's no need to fill that or anything. It's quite a good design really. Now this is where you're supposed to attach the transmission housing to the floor of the tank. Unfortunately, when I removed this piece from the sprue, I actually removed the guide pins as well. Which means there's no way of actually attaching these two pieces and getting them lined up together. So I'll need to leave that till later until more pieces are in and I can guide it in to the correct place. I noticed that a couple of times in this kit that sometimes the guide pins are so small it's easy to confuse them with flash. Here's another good example of when the sprue attachments are really big and the parts themselves are quite delicate, so you have to be careful.
So you can see here the interior is building up quite nicely already. It's really quite detailed. There's a little bit of cleanup I need to do still. And the fit for all of these parts was excellent. I would say even better than the Tacom King Tiger I built recently. I know the King Tiger has many, many more parts and is much more complex, but still it was an excellent fit. The interior of the Lee is white, but there are some parts like this, like the shelves for example, which need to be a different colour. So what I've done here is glued the sub-assemblies together and then dry fitted them into the hull so their glue can cure and they're all in the right place, and then I'll remove them and paint them. I did notice on a few parts that the mould halves seem to be a little bit offset. You can see that here on these shells where it looks like flash on one side just because the, two, the back and the front of the shells haven't been aligned properly. And that's quite hard to clean up as well. There are a few pieces like the fire extinguisher, uh, the Thompson and these other pieces here which need to be painted separately and I'll add those later on. But for now I've given the entire interior a coat of Tamiya white primer and then I've gone over that in patches with just some flat white because the flat white is not quite as glaring as the primer and then I've mixed some flat white with a tiny tiny amount of tan just to give it a slight off-white colour and I've tried to spray that just on the bottom of certain parts of the hull to give a kind of grimy look to it. Hopefully you can see that on the bottom of these pieces here. And before I put the sides of the hull on I gave a light dry brushing of a metallic grey to these non-slip uh, floor panels. And of course I'll do more weathering later on as well.
And now that the side of the hull is on, I can add that missing piece from earlier where I accidentally took off the guide pins. I painted the radio in flat black and just weathered it with a little bit of metallic grey. And already this is taking shape nicely. The next step was to prepare all of the pieces for the upper hole, to cut them from the sprues, to clean them and then to prime them. And you can see here, this is just a small collection of the pieces that needed to be prepared. So we have some more side panels for the hull, we have a roof for the hull, we have the front panel, we have the turret, we have a holder in there for the engine. So in addition to what I've built so far, the two major sub-assemblies are the engine and the main gun. As you can see here, the engine has parts with lots of very fine sprue gates. They require quite a lot of clean up and, and very careful preparation. But the engine itself is fairly easy to build. You just have to be careful to make sure that everything's in the right place and is clicked into place before you put the next component on. This was one difficult stage though. I'm not quite sure what these are, but these go around the edge here. These are very, very fine and I did actually lose a couple of those and, and damage them. I gave the engine a very light dry brush in metallic grey. Fitting the engine into the engine bay was one time when I really had problems with the kit in terms of fit. I really struggled to fit this in and I don't understand why the instructions are in the order that they are. To me it would make more sense to put the engine in first and then put the firewall over the top. Uh, as it is I had to cut a little bit of the engine off at the back and just trim down a few pieces so that it would go far enough in to allow the rear plate to go on. So that, that was definitely a bit of a difficulty. And if we look at the instructions here, there are quite a few fine sort of pipes and cables that go in the engine bay, but unfortunately it's not always exactly clear where they go. And there aren't really any positive location pins on either the engine bay or the engine itself, so a few of those I did leave off just because I honestly couldn't work out where they were supposed to go. That said, most things fitted well and the pipes here for example went through without any problems.
The engine cover design is a little bit tight to fit. I'm actually going to leave it without gluing it because I want to be able to remove it to see the engine. But obviously I'll put it in place for the painting. The main gun is one of the other sub-assemblies, although it's nowhere near as complex as something like the, the King Tiger, for example. It's a fairly simple uh, weapon. And with the main gun in place, you can see how the side armor has been built up. And actually now if we just dry fit the top, basically that's the vehicle almost complete. Now of course in the lee there's a second main gun in the turret. The turret's got a good amount of detail. Even these hatches have their little arms and the inside of the turret has a good amount of rivet detail. I haven't shown a lot of the gun assembly here because this video is getting quite long. And this is the turret basket once it's been built up and painted. I did have a few problems with these side skirts here. I couldn't quite work out how they were supposed to go on because the side looks like it fits well. And you see, if you make the side skirt match up with the step in the hull, then the front is way too far forward and there's actually a big gap in the horizontal surface. 
but if you leave it further back then the thickness of the side skirt gets in the way. So one thing I decided to do was to scrape down and sand down that side skirt to make the fit a, a little bit better. And I had the same problem on the other side as well. Again I had to just thin the skirt out at that point there so that it would fit properly. And then the last part of the construction was to add the PE parts. There's quite a lot of photo etch on this and a lot of it is very fine. And if you're not a fan of photo etch, you should know that there are no alternatives. There are no plastic parts applied. It's photo etch or nothing. These little photo etch parts are supposed to bend down and around and over the tool. And I think once that's done, they actually look quite good when they're on the kit. I think it's definitely worth persevering with these. For the engine cover, I put the photo etch on, but I actually didn't attach them at the top side there because I want these two covers to be separate so they can be removed. And that's because I want to be able to see into the engine bay even when the model is finished. So that's basically it now. The construction of the M3 Lee Australian is finished. All that's left now to do is painting. And I think it looks pretty good in this stage. I'm really happy with the way it went together. I think it's got a really nice amount of detail, but without being over-engineered, there are not too many tiny, fiddly little parts like you get in some other kits. If I put the top on here, you can see that fits quite nicely as well. I'm not going to glue the top of the hull on. I can still fit the turret basket in and the turret on top. I'm really, really happy with this result. Obviously a few gaps that need to be filled. And the engine cover just slides on as well. So guys, thank you very much for watching. And if you've made it to the end of the video, well done. That was quite a long one. In the next video in this series, I will be doing the painting of the exterior and then the weathering of the interior and the exterior. And I'll show you the tracks as well, which I haven't shown in this video. And then the kit will be complete. So as always, thank you very much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, then please remember to hit the like button.